Are you ready to start organizing and assigning tasks in Trello? Welcome back to Trello Essentials for Beginners. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video. But before we dive into that, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that little notification bell so that you never miss a tutorial or upload. Okay, so the first step that we're gonna talk about here is how to assign a task. And in this case, we're mostly gonna be talking about assigning cards, but I will talk about when we want to assign kind of those subtasks as well. So the only people who can be assigned to a card or a task on your board are other members of the board. In this case, it's only me because I'm the only person on this board. So it still can be very beneficial to assign yourself to things, even if you're the only one on the board, specifically for notifications if you're setting reminders and things like that. But especially if you're collaborating with other people on your board, you're going to want to be able to assign different tasks to different people so that it's clear who's working on what. So the main way that you would do that is when you're on your card itself, one of the first things you're going to see here on the back of the card on the right is this join option and a members option. So join would just be adding yourself. And that's a way to, like I said, make sure that you're getting notifications for things, but it also acts as a way to assign yourself to things. But you can also do that in the members button. So when you click on members, you're going to see any of the people who are members of this board. And in this case, just me, but you'd have anybody who is on this board would be listed here. And you simply click on that person and then you can see what's changed here. There's a couple of things have changed. I've now got an image of myself. That's because I've put an image in my profile. You might just see the person's initials in like a colorful little bubble. And then you also see you've now opened up the an easier way to add more people because now you can simply click on this plus sign to add more people or even remove yourself. You may also be noticing that as I'm doing this, it's switching from watch to watching and back and forth. And this is where I'm talking about those notifications. You don't get notifications for cards, even if you've set a reminder on a card, if you're not watching that card or a member of that card. Because one of the worst things that can happen is for someone to get so many notifications for things that they basically just start ignoring them, right? So Trello has put in kind of this extra little fail safe to make sure. And so you can even say, I don't want to watch it. So I can be assigned and be a member of this card without getting those notifications. And that is a super helpful thing when you want to make sure that you don't get bombarded by useless notifications, thus making them pointless and unhelpful for you. So that's how you assign people. The next thing that we're going to talk about is more along the lines of organizing tasks. So there are lots of ways to organize tasks in Trello. That's a big part of what Trello is used for. So we're only going to talk about a couple of things right now. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here are labels. Labels are a great way for you to categorize different tasks to potentially indicate progress on a task. You could even technically use them to assign somebody who isn't a member on the board to a specific task for your own memory. Let's say, for example, someone else on your team is handling something, but they're not on your board. You could potentially create a label for them so that it's a reminder to you, oh yeah, so-and-so is handling that. Labels can also be a great way to grab your attention because they're different colors. And so if you're honing in on red, for example, for whatever that happens to mean for you on your board, it can make it easy for your eye to find those things. But one of the things I love that you can do with labels is you can use them to trigger automations and you can use them in actions for automations as well. And that's one of the main reasons that I recommend clients to leverage labels, but in moderation, because just like with anything, too much of a good thing can be a problem as well. So you can manage labels from your three dot menu, which we saw before, but you can also manage them straight on the card itself. You can create and edit those labels here just like you could in the three dot menu. But as far as adding a label to a particular card, you can't really do that at the board level. You would need to do that on a card by card basis. One of the other great things about labels is that they work just as effectively on mobile as they do on desktop. So if you're using them to trigger automation, it doesn't matter where you're doing it from. It's going to trigger regardless. So if you want to add a particular label, the first label that you're adding, you're going to need to come into this labels button to add a label. But again, just like with members, once you've done that, you'll see that another little section has gotten added to 
the back of your card here so that now if I wanted to add a label, I could again come over here to the labels button or I could simply click onto the label itself or click onto that plus sign. And either way, it's going to give me the ability to change out labels, add additional labels, and even create another label. You can also see here that they have colorblind friendly mode as well. So if those colors are not differentiated enough for you, you can switch that on, enable that, and you'll also see you get these little patterns that work in a similar fashion for you. If you want to take advantage of more colors, because this obviously looks pretty limited, you can simply click into the edit pencil and you can see all the different colors that you have the ability to use as labels. It is important to make sure though that you give a label a title, give it a word, or at very minimum, look at what they have called that label. Because there's a difference between yellow, bold yellow, subtle yellow. There's all these different names that they call it. So it's kind of best for you to put a title of what that label means to you, especially if you're planning on using it in any fashion in automation, because you have to make sure that you're choosing the exact right label so that it behaves the way you're expecting it to. And then the last thing that I want to talk about here is checklists. So there are a lot of ways, like I said, that you can organize your tasks within Trello. In almost all cases, when we are documenting tasks, projects, things of that nature, we have different levels. We have our overall effort, which is often referred to as our project. And then we have tasks. And then we typically have subtasks as well because tasks themselves tend to have a lot of steps that go into it, right? So you can do this in a lot of different ways. You might have an entire board that is that high level, that is that project. And then your tasks might be a list with the cards being the subtask. But what if you even need to go another level down from that? So you've got your project, your tasks, your subtasks, and then your sub subtasks. Or maybe you don't want to use an entire board for a project. You want your list to be the project level and then do tasks and subtasks underneath that. Well, that's where checklists come in. I use checklists for all kinds of things, and they honestly work very similarly to the way that you would expect them to, the way that a to-do list might work for you. I often use this to document processes. So for example, when I'm working on my YouTube video for the week, I have a card for the video itself. And then the checklist has all of the different tasks and things that I need to do so that I make sure that I don't forget any of the steps, that I film the video, that I edit the video, that I create the YouTube shorts that are going to come from that, that I write the description for the video. All of those things are on checklists for me. So when you want to create checklists, you simply come over here to this button. You click on checklist, you give your checklist a title, and you hit add or enter, and it's going to create that checklist for you. From here, you're simply going to add your items. So task one, task two, task three, and so on. And then let's say you have kind of like a secondary. So maybe you're going to use to do as a task and then have these little subtasks underneath it. So for example, I could change the title of this checklist to um, tutorial. And that could be the like high level task of I need to do the tutorial, right? And then within that, it could be film and then edit and then schedule, right? All of these things would make sense as subtasks to the task of creating my tutorial for my business, for an example. But let's say in addition to that, and this is actually true for me, in addition to the main tutorial itself, I also have related videos. So you may have noticed that on my channel here throughout the week, you'll see little clips, those YouTube shorts that are little pieces of these videos that are then pointing you to the full tutorial. So maybe I want to add that in as a subtask and just say create clips, or maybe I want that to be a completely separate task. So then I would simply create another checklist and say shorts, right? And then that checklist, that task is going to come underneath the other checklist. But here's the thing, just like with everything else in Trello, if I accidentally did these out of order or I just wanted to reorder them when I'm working on things, I can simply click and drag. And those can be in whatever order I need or want them to be, okay? Same thing is true of the items in your checklist. So I put these in chronological order, but maybe I need to 
add something in. Maybe I realize, oh, before I can schedule it, I need to write the description. Well, that doesn't happen after scheduling, so I'm going to click and drag and move that in order. And maybe originally I had thought, you know what, I'm going to put those clips underneath the tutorial in the same checklist. And so I put like clip number one right here. And then later I decided, oh, you know what, I think I want a whole separate checklist for that because I'm going to try to complete all of the tutorial checklist in one sitting and then come back and do the other one. So if I want to do that, I don't need to copy paste. I don't need to delete and add a new item. I simply drag that item from one checklist down to the next one. Now, let's say you did need to delete a checklist item. You simply come over here to this little three dot on the checklist item itself, click it, and then you have two options there. You can either convert it into a card, which then becomes a completely separate card, and in this fashion, we'll remove it from the checklist. You may have seen in other videos of mine where you can create a linked card from a checklist item. That's a separate thing. I can link to that video so you can see how that would be in action. And then I could show you that in a future more advanced video. But then you also have the ability to delete that item. And then it just goes away. Okay. Same thing if you realize that you create an entire checklist that you don't need, you can simply delete it here. Another thing that's great about checklists is that there is sort of a way that you can create a template checklist. So this isn't necessarily the number one way that I would suggest creating templates for recurring processes and projects in your business. But maybe I want to uh, generalize this a little bit. And instead of it saying tutorial, I just want to say YouTube video. And then if you've looked around on my channel at all, you know that there are more than one kind of video that I put on my channel. So maybe I want to use this same checklist on those other cards for the other videos that I'm going to work on in the week. Now, I could go in and on those cards, create the YouTube video and add in all those items again, but that takes time. And what if this is a really long list and I really don't want to have to type them out every single time? Well, here's one of the beautiful things about Trello is they already thought of that. So when I come in here to checklist, now that there is a checklist that exists on my board, so you may remember, and if you don't remember, you can rewind a little bit and see when we first created the first checklist. Originally, our only option was this first box. It was just one little box that said title, checklist, and it was highlighted for me to name my checklist. But now that a checklist exists on this board already, I still have that option, but now I also have a copy items from dropdown. When I click on that, I'm going to see the checklist that already exist on this board and what card it is on. And I can simply choose that option. And it's basically using that as a template and making a copy of that checklist. So if I hit add, and then we scroll down, you're going to see that that entire checklist with all of its items just populated itself onto the card. So it is a great way that you can save time if you're going to use the same checklist on lots of different types of cards. That's one way. We will in the future talk more about other ways that you can create templates for recurring processes and things like that in your business. So stay tuned for that. But this is one quick way that you can start doing that now. Another thing that's great about checklists is that it helps you see your progress through a project. So as you start checking off items, you can see that we're getting a progress bar here that says, hey, you're 25% done with this little piece already. Awesome. When I check it again, 50% done. And when I close the card, I can see here that it has totaled all of the items on both of the checklists on the front of the card here. So there are eight items because there were four in each checklist. And I've completed two of them already. Now, let's say I go through and I complete them all. We can see we got this is green. They're 100% done. But also on the front of the card here, we can see that this is green and says eight out of eight. So it helps me very easily see like, hey, I've completed all of the tasks that are already on this card. So that one is good to go. Another thing that's great about checklists and Trello is that if you do have super long task lists and you don't want your card to get cluttered and all full of stuff, you are able to hide the items that are completed. And then if you were to add something new to this list, only that one item would show, but your progress bar would be updated accordingly. 
This also works on mobile in the same kind of way. You can hide all of the items or the completed items so that your checklists on your cards don't get super long and make you have to do a ton of scrolling to see what's going on. The last little piece that I wanna touch on here is for my premium folks. So those of you who are not in a free workspace, you are working in one of the paid workspaces. You also have access to advanced checklists. And that's where you get these extra little buttons here that say assign or due date. So if you remember at the beginning of this tutorial, I said that there are two ways that you can assign someone to a task on your board. One of them being the entire card and anyone can do that. Free workspace, paid workspace, doesn't matter. Anyone can use that type of assignment. But when it comes to your subtasks, if you're organizing them in this way, only in the paid workspaces do you have the ability to assign a specific task. And you can see when the item is not active in that way, you're able to see them as smaller little buttons here. So just to the left of that three dot menu that we used to convert or delete that item, we have the ability to assign and we get that same little member window that we had before. And you can also give this particular subtask its own due date and reminder, just like you can at the card level, no matter what kind of workspace you're working in. As you give that particular task a due date and or reminder, you hit save and you can see here that this is marked as overdue because I just said it for a minute ago. But when I mark that task complete, it will clear itself. And, and if I were to see it still, it would show as green. So that's the basics of assigning tasks, using labels to organize and be able to trigger automation, which we'll touch on the automation part in a future video as well as checklists that help you organize those tasks and the subtasks that are at all different levels within your process and or project. The online tools for your business do not need to be complicated and overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy. I hope you liked that video and more importantly that you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with a fellow solopreneur. And make sure you check out the description for links to how we can connect and maybe even work together.